So today I'm gonna go over Drizzly's streaming architecture. Um, there's a lot of tools listed here. So um, hopefully we can learn something new. So I'm gonna go quickly over analytics at Drizzly, um, touch on our batch infrastructure since that um, affected a lot of our decisions around our streaming infrastructure. Um, go through our current use case and architecture and then touch on some next steps that involve Tecton. So jumping into analytics at Drizzly, this is what our analytics org chart looks like. So under analytics, we have data infra, uh, business intelligence, marketing analytics, and data science. Um, we also work really closely with our data engine engineering team, of course, they're the ones setting up, um, standing up all of this infrastructure, um, though they don't sit underneath the analytics umbrella. So um, this is kind of like our philosophy around building out our data platform. Uh, I work really closely with our data engineering team uh, to build out this data platform that um, anyone who wants to use data at Drizzly can, um, can access data from. So this includes our data pipelines, our BI tools, our batch infrastructure, data science and machine learning, um, as well as our real time infrastructure that I'll touch on today. So jumping in quickly to batch, um, as Dimitri mentioned, we are really leaning into the modern data stack um, we've been building this out for the past two years. Um, so we're on Snowflake for our data warehouse and we use DBT to manage all of our data transformations um, in Snowflake. All right, so getting into the good stuff with real time infrastructure. So first I wanna touch on like why we're doing this, um, why we need real time in the first place. Um, so I'm gonna start off with an example. So say you're hanging out with some friends, you're having some drinks, um, but you're running low, you need to stock up. So you open the Drizzly app, you add some White Claw to your cart because that's everybody's favorite summer drink. And then you get distracted by one of your friends and you forget to check out. So some time goes by, and Drizzly reminds you, hey, you have something in your cart, you know, don't forget to check out. So we currently have this process in place, but it's on a 24 hour cadence. So if I don't check out, I'm not going to get a notification until the next day. And that's not really a great um, process right now because in a day later, I'm probably not going to really need those drinks anymore. Um, so this is where the real time infrastructure comes in. Um, with our new setup, um, we're planning to have these notifications go out on a 30 minute cadence. So if you add something to cart 30 minutes later, you don't check out, we're gonna nudge you with a notification to remind you to check out. Hopefully you're still in that moment um, where it's needed. So we're hoping to see a really big improvement there. So this kind of seems like an easy problem when I explain it that way, but it's actually pretty complex to solve in the real time space. So for one, triggering on the absence of an event is pretty hard and that's what we're trying to do here. So someone has an add to cart event, but they don't have a checkout event following in 30 minutes. Um, originally, we were looking to solve this with KSQL since we're using Confluent Cloud. But unfortunately, we couldn't really solve this problem with KSQL alone, just due to limitations on um, joins and things like that that were possible with KSQL. Um, thankfully, we already use DBT and we were introduced to materialize. Using these tools together, we can much more easily solve these sorts of problems. So this is what our infrastructure looks like. Um, we have Confluent Cloud managing our schema registries and Kafka topics. Um, so going through kind of the abandoned cart use case here, we would have add to cart and checkout events 
coming in to these topics, which would then be read into these source objects in materialize. DBT would manage all of the uh, materialized views, which are pretty much just SQL queries where um, we're writing SQL to join the data how we need, to transform the data how we need, to apply any sort of logic to say, yes, this user has an abandoned cart. Um, once we have that, we can send data out of materialize using a sync object, which uh, writes back to another topic which then can be read by any sort of outbound service, in this case, um, sending notifications to the users who have that abandoned cart. So why materialize? As I mentioned, we can write uh, real-time SQL pretty much exactly the same as we already are in Snowflake with batch. So it was a much lower barrier to entry. Um, Again, touching on DBT compatibility, we love using DBT on the analytics team and it was a huge plus for us that we could continue using it um, for our real-time platform. Um, again, with DBT, we can centralize that logic in one place, similar to how we are for batch. And applications can either connect directly to materialize um, or as I showed earlier, we can use those sync objects to send data out um, with like event-driven workflows. In keeping with DBT, we really love that we're gonna be able to have a streaming DBT project along with our batch DBT project where we can follow basically the same sets of standards that we already have in place. Um, analysts and data scientists are already using DBT on a day-to-day -day basis. So the ramp up for moving um, over to real-time analytics should be relatively um, easy. And again, deploying a real-time model should be as easy as just writing a SQL query. All right, so getting into what we're looking forward to doing next. We're really excited to bring Tekton into our stack uh, for our feature store. So with our real-time setup here, we can see that we can not only bring data in um, to Tekton from Snowflake, we can also start to utilize some real-time features with our Confluent materialized DBT setup. So we don't actually need this for our abandoned cart use case, but um, we'll need it going forward for some other use cases we have in mind. So that's what I have here with abandoned browse. So in this use case, we'll actually wanna be um, setting up some machine learning models to do um, some predictions on um, if someone abandons browse on Drizzly, we can predict say the top couple items they might've been most interested in based on their browsing experience, based on their past behavior and be able to send them a little nudge notification on um, you know, highlighting those specific items that we think they might be most likely to purchase. So where are we going? Um, V1 is where we are right now. Again, limited personalization. We're not really utilizing any sort of data science model quite yet, um, but this was really our like POC phase. We're learning these tools. We're setting them up for the first time. Uh, V2 is kind of what I just touched on with abandoned browse. So starting to implement some more data science modeling in the mix, predicting, um, as I mentioned, like say the top three items someone might have been interested in based on their session and past purchases. And then looking forward even more, we, uh, we think this can actually feed directly onto real-time dynamic experiences on Drizzly. So, you know, say someone is browsing on Drizzly, they're looking at wine pretty heavily for the first time. Uh, maybe we can trigger some sort of quiz and um, get their wine preferences and then return some recommendations to help them along with their um, purchase. So that was really quick, but that is all I have. Um, if you have any questions, definitely reach out in Slack. I'll be hanging out there for a little bit to uh, answer any questions anyone might have.